She's always made the best out of very difficult situations. She certainly never had it easy. And she turned all of that around. Every painful moment, she turned into an opportunity. But she has this contrast of fragility, but uh, strength as well. A visionary. My name is Karen May, and I'm the founder and CEO of Sabika. Kirsten is brilliant. When you hear her laugh, you know she's in the room. She loves people, and she's very warm, has a very big heart. My name is Kirsten Mayer. I run the sales and field services for Sabika. Alexandra is a very gifted designer. It's a very warm person. She's always seen the world slightly differently. And we cherish her as that. Alexandra Mayer Grasek, and I'm the VP of uh, Design at Sabika. He is the person who very early on saw the potential that is in me. He's a gentleman. He will go the distance to protect and take care. I'm Conrad Mayer. I'm the Vice President of Operations and Finance. Sabika was founded because I wanted to help the family survive in a very difficult time. We have found, in a way, our calling within the the business world as a family. Sabika is a tool to help enrich lives. You have such a diversity of, of women that this jewelry speaks to in, in totally different ways. We try to take ourselves back and let the person that wears it shine. The ultimate goal is to make someone else enjoy it. I think the heart behind it is what makes Sabika unique. It means just everything to me. I want to touch people with, with, this, with this jewelry. There's something that Sabika does and that, that you can't put your finger on it. What defines us, I think, is my uh, ex personal experience in the fashion industry. Karen is able to translate European style and adapting it to the US tastes and preferences. What we do is we watch the runway trends in Milan, in Paris, in New York, and we collect images from those trends. So we do take those uh, pictures, and then we have found that 18 trays per season, 18 little fashion stories are perfect to serve uh, our customers as they come to the parties, and that we have something that makes them just a little bit prettier that puts a light switch on their faces. Then Alexandra looks at them with me. She's very specific in terms of the overall looks that she wants to accomplish. I say, Alexandra, what I see in this picture is not just the red, but it is the proportions. The, the process has become so, so natural now. Or it is the insertion of the flowers with the red, or it is the black. It's a back and forth process, so I sketch some things out, very raw sketches, so it's just little notes that I can refer back to. And she already translates it. It's my job to make it into an actual piece, into, a, you know, into reality, really. When she starts the creation of the necklaces, I step back. I, I love that moment of taking the, those first trays because that's, that, that's like, you know, I'm off. That's when I get to start and, and get to dive into the components and, and putting, putting them together. In her designs, you can tell that she used to be a dancer. None of her jewelry is symmetrical. She always designs everything, picturing it already in movement. The metal dances when she designs, and the color stands when she designs. I, I like to work almost like sculpturally. I like to just feel the materials, lay them together, um, try certain, you know, certain things out. Some things don't work. Sometimes the piece will end up being completely different than than where it started. Yeah, that's that's my favorite moment, really. 
And then she comes back and surprises me mostly, I have to say. Because I do know how it has to look, but I have no idea how to get there. And she is the one who gets there. The whole process of the whole craft is fascinating to me. It still, it still amazes me. Everything is handmade. There's too many steps that I could count them right now. Uh, it's, it's an honor um, to, to have a piece that you've designed go through that whole process and have it touched by so many people. It's, a, you know, it's not just my heart that goes into it, it's, it's their care and their heart and their love that goes into, into the pieces as well. And the pride they take in, in, in creating those pieces, those are really the moments that, that, that I live for. The piece in itself inherits the craft, tradition, the processes that were honed over generations, but the resulting product is really very up to date. Take a product adapted to the U.S. and then see how far you can go uh, with it. I'm very passionate about that and I love that. Sabika is absolutely a party plan company. Be a different kind of home party company. There are easier ways, but this is the best way for the product that we have. To elevate the home parties to a different, more sophisticated level. It's, it's about, all right, take a look. Is there anything you like? Great, let's try it on. To have each jewelry piece find its owner and that match, that's, uh, that's really very satisfactory when you know you've made someone really happy. There would be no party without Kirsten really having set up the framework, the training for that party. When you're thinking about joining a direct sales company, you join as an entrepreneur. And that's a, that's a scary proposition. Women are very bright, and nowadays women are very educated, but rarely do they give themselves permission to be great. And to get to that point where you just feel, I'm getting so much more out of it than I'm putting into it. Sabika gives them permission uh, to grow. That's what I want each and every one of our consultants to feel, and that's the lesson that carries over. If you want it, you can do it. And it might be scary, and it might seem really big, but that feeling of accomplishment, that's priceless. I grew up in, in 12, 13 cities. Vienna was the first time where I found a home. Growing up in two, two worlds, growing up in, in the States, in Pittsburgh, and then spending summers in Austria and having, you know, speaking German at home and all of that. So I had to make those two worlds kind of work together. So it, it taught me to do that. And it taught me to, to, to see the strengths of both. It has the rich cultural history. I mean, just being surrounded by the buildings, the parks. You, you can't help but be inspired in Vienna. It's, it's just elegant and, and beautiful and rough at the same time. I think that that still shapes us in a way. And when I go so downtown, I do know the stores. I look for familiar faces. I look for familiar coffee shops. My soul is at peace and I'm at home in Vienna. I love America. I love Austria, and I'm so grateful to have found a business that lets me connect both. I think I, each of us have a very clear vision for the company, but it's also a very personal approach to that vision. We all feel like we're part of something bigger. Many, many have problems. We grow tremendously. We are really at the early stages 
I want to change the approach to design, the approach to, to fashion. I want other women to feel, to feel what this feels like. I would like Sabika to be a national presence in the U.S. I want to touch more lives. I want to reach more women. A word that always comes to mind is legacy. Make it bigger. But it is from that joy and from that spreading of joy. And that's what will always keep us going. There's no question in my mind. Everything I do is out of, out of love. I see a bright future for Sabika.